Hey YouTubers, Steven here, enjoying a nice freshly brewed coffee this Saturday morning. Beautiful outside, it's sunny, it's crisp, but that's December for you. Um, I want to give a shout out to all my new subscribers. I really appreciate you subscribing to my channel. Uh, your comments have all been wonderful and I really appreciate it. Um, a special shout out to Pajama Pete's Kids. Uh, your father emailed me, told me you guys really enjoy my videos, and uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, if there's anything you'd like me to see, uh, and this goes for all my subscribers, you know, just send me an email. Um, if it's something that I can do, uh, or I can find a recipe for, more than happy to, uh, to learn it, and you can come along with me, or show you how to do it. So today, with my wine cooler uh, experiment, the one gallon batch turned out so well that I'm going to do a five gallon batch and there were some details that I didn't go over. Um, so today we're going to roll some more details into everything and um, I'm going to show you how to make a five gallon batch. We'll do the math on calculating how much of the, the fermented water we need to add for the juice when we go to bottle it and um, maybe some other things that uh, I can't think of off the top of my head right now. Um, so let me just uh, grab some sugar here and uh, well, I guess we'll just leave the camera where it is for now. I mean, you can see my bucket, which is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start it with uh, a two kilogram or a one pound bag of sugar. We'll get this in, we'll get it dissolved, and then we're going to do a hydrometer reading. Because uh, what I'd like to do, I'd actually like to have uh, the wine coolers come out about 8%. Now I used a program called uh, QBrew. It's a free download on the internet. And um, I basically got it just as an alcohol calculator. So I was playing around with the numbers. Uh, normally, you know, when... Uh, when my beer is done fermenting, it usually comes out about 1.010, uh, which is fairly low. So I use that as my final gravity, and then just calculating my sugar, um, I wanted to come out around 1.075, um, 1 1.70, 1.705 will give me just over 8% according to this calculator. Okay, I'm not hearing any sugar on the bottom. Just my spoon on the, the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hydrometer, which is sterilized, and I'm just going to drop it in the bucket and we'll see what it reads. Give her a little spin there. Drop it in. Ooh, my cell phone texting. Hmm. I think she still wants to work on Monday, so I'll have to let her know she got a text. All right. Off with the fun here. Now, move my spoon out of the way, and what's my initial reading from 2 kilograms? It's 1.040, so according to my hydrometer, that's in about the 5% range. Right, so uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll bring the camera over so we can see. Just hovering around that 1.040 mark. So, we're going to add a little more sugar to it. Oh. There we go, look at that. We're into the 1.070. You can see the water is just on that 70 mark. Okay, so. Now that we've achieved uh, really, really close to what I was looking for, the 
75.1.070. Um, to recap, we started out with uh, 2 kilograms of sugar, which brought us up to 1.040. Uh, I really don't want to make this an extremely long video, so uh, that's why I'm recapping a lot of what I've already filmed. Uh, I'm probably going to edit out. Um, then, to try and reach uh, the level that I wanted, we added five more cups of sugar. That brought us up to 1.60. Uh, Not quite the, the objective that I was looking for, so I added three more cups. And that brought me just over um, the 1.060, you know, in around that range. So I put the rest of the, the 2 kilogram package of sugar into it. And now I'm over 1.70. So that it's exactly where I wanted it to be. So basically, uh, to recap, 4 kilograms of uh, just regular white granular table sugar. Uh, almost 23 liters of water because you have to remember you're putting sugar in the water it's going to increase your volume and I'm just a hair off of 23 liters so you know what I'm extremely happy with that so our next step we're going to transfer our sugar water mix into a glass carboy and um, one thing I wanted to show you okay I have what's called a brewer's funnel uh, this was given to me I don't know uh, where my friend got it but if you use a regular funnel what will end up happening is all the the water is going down in through the funnel and on your neck is going to cut off the air supply so what's going to end up happening is your water wants to go in or your liquid wants to go in it's going to airlock in your carboy well this one is a brewers one hopefully this will show up see that little groove there right here see this little groove that allows the air to get out so that you don't get air locked and let me tell you this is one classy little funnel I can fill it right up and it pours out just as fast as I'm filling it so uh, let me move the camera and we'll, we'll fill up the glass carboy next step we're gonna fill up our carboy five gallons of water is not easy to hold Oop. See how great this funnel transfers the water in? If you had a regular funnel, you'd have to have somebody holding the funnel so that it wouldn't get airlocked. That's the star sand, the sanitizer bubbling out. And only a drop left in there. So you see how fast that groove let the air out? Fantastic. Put that in my sink. And then the next step, I am using EC. 1118 wine yeast. Um, I don't know if it would be better with different wine yeasts, uh, I'm not really sure, but that's why home brewing is fun because you can always experiment and play with it. We'll put that in there. We're going to let this ferment out for about two weeks and then we'll come back. Okay, everybody, settle down. Get out your papers and pencils. Okay, because I'm only going to do this once. Albert 
Put away the quantum physics book. Come on. <laughs> okay, everybody. Um, I had several questions on the math on doing the wine coolers. So I'm going to use the whiteboard here because it's a lot easier than using, um, you know, a notepad and trying to do it. Now the juice that I'm going to use, okay, it's called Cool Quenchers. Comes in, you know, little container. Um, the questions you have to ask yourself, how many different flavors do I want? How many containers of juice do I need? How many beer bottles am I going to need? So I'm just going to do this as one example. Um, if you have any troubles doing the math, you know, if you're going to do only two flavors or if you want to do more than the three flavors that I want to do, because I want to do a lemonade, I want to do a strawberry kiwi, um, and I'm kind of on the fence on my third one. I kind of like the idea of doing peach, man. I kind of like the idea of doing iced tea. So, I don't know. You know, when it boils down to it, maybe I'll do four. But either way, for my math, I'm thinking I'm just going to do three flavors. So, here's what we're going to do. Okay? We know as brewers that five gallons equals. 23 liters. Easy. So 23 liters is 23,000 milliliters. Now, you can't divide 23,000 by 3 too easily. So, what I'm doing is I'm going to add 1 liter or 1,000 milliliters to give me 24,000 milliliters. And if I divide that by 3, that gives me 8,000 milliliters. Okay, nice, even, round number. So, 8 liters. I can use a 2 liter pop bottle, or I can get, um, you know, a, a good measuring cup. Okay, so, we're going to remember this number, 8,000 milliliters. That's our magic number. <clears throat> all right, now, the cool quenchers that I'm going to use, all right, is 225 milliliters. Okay, that's the size of the container. Now, it says to mix it six equal parts with water okay so multiplied by six gives me thirteen hundred and fifty milliliters okay so <clears throat> this is if I was just mixing up one juice container so here's my total amount alright of just water that I'm going to put into it so what we need to do is how many juice containers am I going to need for 8 liters or 8,000 milliliters. If we do 8,000 divided by 1350 gives us 5.92 or we'll round it up to 6 juice containers. So for the first flavor or for each flavor I'm going to need six juice containers. Fairly easy. But, big question, okay, come bottling day, how many bottles are you going to need to wash? Because this isn't your typical batch of beer where we know, okay, well, I need vague, roughly, you know, 60 bottles. Um, when I bottle, I usually do clean and sanitize, you know, 63 or 64 bottles just in case I have a little bit of extra liquid, you know, don't want to waste it. So what we need to figure out, okay, is we're going to take the 8,000 milliliters, because that's our total water content, and six of these juice containers, we already know, is 1350. Okay, so that gives us a grand total of 
were 9 liters and 350 milliliters. Now, just for your average beer bottle, okay, is 345 milliliters. So we'll take that, 9350, and we'll divide it by 345, okay, you see that? This is our total water and juice mixture for one flavor. Each beer bottle is 345 milliliters, which gives us 27.1. Now, you know, you're going to lose you're going to have some extra, you know, liquid in left in the bottom of your bucket and your hose when you transfer it all over. But this gives you a good number, 27. And since we're doing three flavors, all right, that's 21 carry 2, that's 6, that's That gives us a good yield of 81 bottles for our wine coolers. But Every uh, juice from concentrate is different. Um, there's another brand here called Old South. That juice container is a little bigger, and you know how much water you put in it, it's a little different. Also, the cans of frozen concentrate, that's a little different again as well. I think it's like three cans of water to one can. But I don't want to confuse you with a lot of math. This is uh, the juice that I'm going to be using, and just to show you how to break it down, you know, to figure out how much juice, how much liquid, how many bottles you're going to need to clean, because come bottling day, you don't want to be left, you know, with not enough clean and sanitized bottles. So uh, if you have any troubles, just drop me an email, um, you know, in the inbox. Tell me, you know, the size of your juice container. Um, the instructions like how many parts uh, of water that need to be mixed with it and uh, in the size of your beer bottles because we all know there's all kinds of different sizes uh, look at Corona bottles 330 milliliters your regular beer bottles 345 milliliters um, the green flip top bottles the Grosh bottles uh, they're 450 milliliters uh, Fisher bottles you know, the, the big ones that I showed in another video, they're 650 milliliters. And hell, quart bottles, you know, the big old quart beer bottles, uh, I think they're 750 milliliters. So, you know, depending on what you're using, uh, you may want to just crunch some numbers, see what bottle's going to work for you. If you're like me, I've got all kinds of different bottles. So, uh, let's get on to the next step. All right, so today we're doing a hydrometer test. My airlock is still bubbling. Let's wiggle this out here. And this is my arrogant bastard ale clone. Still fermenting, or it's done fermenting. So I'll give you a little trick. If you don't have an air thief, all right, take your beer line. <clears throat> this is what you can do to, to siphon out some uh, some liquid. Is uh, when you put it in, just throw it inside. This line's all sanitized. I'm all ready to bottle the, the arrogant bastard. We're just going to slide our line in, get it filled up, and then put your thumb over the top. Right? So that you have all the liquid in the line. And we're just going to let gravity do its thing. You have to do this a couple of times, but probably won't need that much. Okie dokie, there we go. And our hydrometer reading. One point zero one five in around there, so this is pretty much done fermenting. Alright. Whew, you can really smell the alcohol in the tube. Alright, put you up there. Don't fall. Okay, so the next step. <clears throat> like you saw in my other video, 
uh, in the ex wine cooler experiment. Okay, we used um, uh, potassium sorbate. Now the instructions on this say to add a half a teaspoon for every uh, gallon. So, uh, I've got five gallons, so that's four and a half teaspoons. I have a sanitized uh, teaspoon here. So I'm just going to open this up a little bit further. There's one. Two. And a half. sanitized spoon and on the end if you see it's got the little measuring cup all right makes it good for stirring so we'll get this down in here and we'll get this all stirred up good all right and I'm just going to set my airlock back in it we'll leave this for at least uh, a week maybe two weeks so that the, the yeast stops um, replicating itself and dies off. That way we can add our um, fruit juice to it. It's not going to ferment out anymore and our fruit juice is going to keep this drink sweet. So uh, stay tuned. Everybody, we're back. All right, guess what today is? You got it, bottling day. Get my sanitized spoon here. And I've got all my juices. Got some strawberry kiwi. I got some peach. And I got some lemonade. Now I loved my hard lemonade that I did. It was really, really sour, but there's a lot of people that didn't like it that sour, so we're gonna get started here. I got all my juice. I think I'm gonna do the strawberry kiwi first. So the just like I described earlier in the video. I need six containers of strawberry kiwi. You like my new measuring cup I got? It's more like a bucket, eh? <laughs> Actually, it was a really good deal. I went to a uh, restaurant equipment wholesaler, if you will. Here locally, if you're in Nova Scotia or Halifax, uh, it's Russell Foods that I went to. Uh, it's just over by McCara Street. And this was only seven bucks. And uh, it does 12 quarts, which I think is close to 11 liters, 12 liters, something like that. So when I uh, transferred the, oh, the uh, wash, I'm going to call it, from, the, um, from my carboy, I added one liter of water so that uh, you know, I have, have a total of 24 liters. And then I used this and measured it. Now, eight liters is eight and a half quarts, so I measured it as close as I could. And I'm just going to give this a little stir. Whoa, wow, does that ever smell good. And uh, with my calculations, this come out close to what I was looking for. I was looking for, you know, around seven, eight percent. And uh, it... When I used Q Brew, it um, it said my alcohol content with my starting gravity of 1.070, finishing at 1.015 uh, gives me 7.1 percent. So I'm right in the ballpark. Now this is all mixed up. All I got to do is bottle it, rinse it out, sanitize it, and just continue the process for my other flavors. And uh, I'm gonna have a lot of wine coolers. All right, sanitized glass. I just wanted to take a little swig just to see what it tastes like. Oh my, mm. good. And you'd figure at 7% alcohol, there'd be a real alcohol bite to it, uh, but there's none. Um, this would be really deadly in the summer. So I hope you found uh, this video very informative. Uh, hopefully it answers all your questions. If not, you know, just 
drop me a message in the inbox or put your, your question in the comments because other people may have the same questions. Um, and just let me know. Alright folks, so I hope you're having a great weekend and uh, thanks for watching my, my video. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I've got lots of great videos and I always have more coming out. So uh, have a great day everyone and cheers.